Yeah, hi, uh, this is um, uh, Prash. I'm the founder of Bioclus organization. I'm currently based in Denmark, uh, doing my uh, fifth year of my postdoc uh, at Aarhus University in Denmark. Uh, my current work is uh, specifically based on prioritizing uh, SNPs in uh, humans and as well as animal genomes. We have come up with uh, a kind of a strategy uh, to screen and uh, prioritize SNPs and uh, give them a kind of a bona fidelity based on um, uh, hierarch hierarchical clustering. We use uh, different strategies like uh, uh, providing functional uh, motives, whether or not you know any of these particular SNPs are uh, highly conserved. Uh, the second option uh, we usually check is whether or not any of these uh, uh, regions have got any regulatory role and whether or not any of these particular SNPs are evolutionarily conserved. So if, if any of these particular SNPs are evolutionarily conserved, that would mean that there is a higher chance that there are transcription factor binding sites associated with these uh, regions. Uh, and our theory is that if there are transcription factor binding sites associated with uh, those particular regions, we assume that most of those particular SNPs are to be causal or pathogenic. Um, personally, uh, I'm uh, very much interested in uh, hypothetical proteins. Most of my publications have been uh, into hypothetical proteins and uh, functional genomics aspects of uh, the known unknown regions. The last two, two and a half to three years, I've been focusing on uh, the long known coding RNAs, uh, which are a class of uh, 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 non-coding uh, RNAs, uh, but these family members are uh, more than 200 base pairs, and uh, they're not uh, highly conservant compared to its uh, predecessors or with, or, or with its you know uh, sibling non-coding RNAs like microRNAs. Uh, most of these long non-coding RNAs are very much focused in such a way that. Uh, the five prime upstream regions of these long known coding RNAs uh, constitute many of these uh, transcriptional or regulatory sites. So my interest has been really into the protein-protein interaction perspective of uh, the long known coding RNAs. So when I say protein-protein interaction networks, if there are any non coding RNAs like long known coding RNAs that are sitting five prime uh, uh, five prime regions or upstream regions of those particular proteins. We just try to predict whether or not any of these long known coding RNAs are interacting with the proteins. Uh, not necessarily that the protein adjacent uh, to these long known coding RNAs could be interacting. So in evolution we might even find a long known coding RNA that is sitting um, across the genome, genome wide, sitting, sitting uh, uh, across the uh, genome or in different chromosomes or different organelles and could, could be interacting with its peers. So uh, we, have, uh, we are just you now trying to apply our classification scoring scheme approach that we applied for our hypothetical proteins that which we worked uh, way back in 2006. And now we know we are just trying to predict the long known coding RNA protein interactions in humans. We have worked on uh, a couple of them across all uh, eukaryotes and as well as eutherians, including humans, porcine models, and as well as bovine models. We're also just trying to check their uh, efficacy and conservation across mice and as well as rats and, 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 and dogs. Our specific targeted proteins are, uh, uh, the, uh, are those particular long known coding RNAs interacting with disease causing genes or disease causing uh, proteins. Uh, that, that that hail from the differential express genes, and uh, these are specific to immunomodulatory responsive genes uh, that are causal to uh, lupus, systemic lupus erythematosus, and obesity. I appreciate uh, that you're all participating in this, and you're most welcome to join uh, bioclues.org. Thank you very much for organizing this. Uh, thank you, Sugu Rajdeep and Datri. Bye bye.